And that's going to be equal to, <clears throat> let's see, 6 times, uh, let's just do it this way. we got 6y plus 6x dy over dx. And then, obviously, the derivative of negative 1 is 0. Okay? Does everybody follow my derivative? Yes or no? It's a product rule, right? Because we got x times y. We're taking the derivative of that. So the derivative of x is 1, giving me dy. The derivative of y is dy over dx, giving me 6x dy dx. Okay? Now I need to solve for dy over dx. <clears throat> Which means that I'm basically looking at the following. I've got 3y squared dy over dx minus 6x dy over dx is equal to 6y minus 3 x squared. Does everybody follow what I did? Okay, now I'm going to factor out the dy over dx. We have dy over dx times 3y squared minus 6x is equal to 6y minus 3x squared. You want to divide through by the 3y squared minus 6x, and we get the following. dy over dx is equal to 6y minus 3x squared all over 3y squared minus 6x. Now, that's the first derivative. I also said in the problem that we want to find or an evaluate at the given point. The given point is 2 comma 3, which means that I want to go ahead and find dy over dx, open parentheses, 2 comma 3, close parentheses. That means I'm going to evaluate it at that point. It's just like using f of x, f of y, f of z, whatever. It's a function, and I'm evaluating it. This is going to go in for your x values, and this is going to go in for your y values. So we're going to have 6 times 3 minus 3 times 2 quantity squared all over 3 times y, which is 3 quantity squared minus 6 times x, which is 2. And then I just go ahead and I'm going to simplify that if at all possible. So I got 18 minus, that's 4 times 3 is 12, over, that's 9 times 3 is 27 minus 12. So 18 minus 12 is 6, 27 minus 12 is 15. I will go ahead and reduce that down to two-fifths. And that's my answer. So you need both parts in order to answer the question. You need this, and you need this. Okay? Any questions? So now, we've got this function here. This, or I should say this equation, x squared y minus 4x equals 5. I want the class to find the first derivative implicitly. Do not solve it for y. Solve it implicitly. So we will find a derivative implicitly.
one's too easy. Anybody? Stacy, you got an answer for me? Not yet? Cardi, you got an answer for me? What do you got? Anybody agree with him? Because I have no idea what it is. Okay. So we go ahead and we do this implicitly. So that means that I've got 2xy plus x squared dy over dx minus 4 is equal to 0, right? So we get x squared dy over dx is equal to 4 minus 2xy. dy over dx is equal to 4 over x squared minus 2y over x, right? Is that what you said? Okay, that'll work. <clears throat> now, the question is, all right, first off, the question is, did anybody not get either one of those? Yes. No, I didn't get it. Do you understand what you did wrong? All right, let's see what you got, Eric. Let me look at it. I'm rewriting what you got, but right. I had uh, 2x, and then I tried to take the derivative of that, and I thought it was just 1, so I didn't put anything. All right, one. it is, but you got if you take the derivative of y, it's kind of like it's exactly what I did right here. If you take the derivative of y, and it's 1, you still got to indicate that I took the derivative of y with respect to x by putting the dy over dx. Now... I, I do this because, number one, to me that seems like an awful lot of work. Because if I look at the function x squared y minus 4x equals 5, I could write it as x squared y equals 5 minus 4x, and then I could write it as y is equal to 5 over x squared minus 4 over x. Now, why do I keep splitting it up like that? Well, because I don't like to do the quotient rule. Just because it takes more work. Because if I split it up like this, this right here becomes y is equal to 5x to the negative 2 minus 4x to the negative 1. And now find the derivative, and what do you get? You have dy over dx is equal to what? Well, go ahead. And is that even remotely close to what I've got up there for a derivative? No, it's not. Oh, but wait. What does this have that this one doesn't have? It's got a y. But what did we just show that y was equal to? This, right? If I take this and plug it in up there for what y is, guess what I'll end up with? This right here. This right here is an explicit differential. There's not going to be a y term on the right-hand side. It can't be. That's why this gives me a different answer than that. Does that make sense? They're both the right answer. This right here is in implicit form. And this one down here if I were to rewrite it with positive exponents, this is in explicit form. Hello? 
However, what did I say to do in the directions? Find it implicitly. Hence, on the test, this is what you would want to leave as your answer. Okay? Yeah. Okay, this is, a, this is a product rule, right? Derivative of the first, 2x times the second, plus the first times the derivative of the second, which is backwards from the way the textbook writes it. I told you guys that when I went over it. But I get the same answer that you get if you use the product rule, using the textbook method, right? Where am I losing you? I know. I'm sorry. But addition and multiplication are commutative, right? That's No. Because I'm looking at taking the derivative of the first, which is 2x, times the second, which is y. It can't go away. Okay? Does that make sense? Are you sure? Because you don't look convinced. What's the difference between doing that and doing this? Take the derivative of that. 2x cosine x. Uh, let's make that a sign because I don't want to change the signs. 2x sine x plus x squared cosine x. Same exact concept. The trig function doesn't go away. It's still there. The y is a differentiable function of x, even though it's not in terms of x. OK? <clears throat> so we have dy over dx is equal to 4 over x squared minus 2y over x. Or we have the other one. Doesn't really matter. OK? So let's look at it from this point of view. Let's say that we've got um, we've got the derivative dy over dx, and we'll go ahead and use the four minus two xy over x squared form. Find the following implicitly. What does this tell me to do? Find the second derivative. Well, if this is the first derivative, I'm going to find the second derivative now. That means when I go to find the second derivative, this right here becomes that notation, d squared y over dx squared. This is the second derivative of y with respect to the second derivative of x. Okay? What do I got to use here? Can't hear you. Quotient rule. Okay? Got to use quotient rule. Derivative of the numerator. Whoa, wait a minute. Derivative of the numerator. What do I got to use in the derivative of the numerator? I got to use the sum and difference rule and the product rule. Ooh, this gets nasty. It gets messy. So, what's the derivative of 4? It's 0. It goes away. You don't have to worry about it right now. The derivative of negative 2xy is going to be given as the following. Negative 2y minus 2x dy over dx, okay, times the denominator, which is x squared, minus the numerator, which is 4 minus 2xy, times the derivative of the denominator, which is 2x, all over the denominator squared. You guys follow me on that? If you don't, say something. Because if you don't say anything, I'm going to assume, and I hate to use that word, 
that you know what I'm doing. Yep. This part right here, the negative 2y, that's using the first part of the product rule. What's the derivative of x? 1 gives me negative 2y. The 4 goes away. I don't have to worry about it, right? Then I've also got to deal with the fact that I've got to take the derivative of that with respect to the second factor. Okay, So it's going to be plus, but it happens to be a minus in this case because the whole term is minus to start with, right? 2x times the derivative of y, which is dy over dx, times what the denominator is, which is x squared. Then, since this is a quotient rule, overall, I'm subtracting the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, or up there is the denominator. Questions? Comments? <clears throat> Just because I do my product rule backwards from the way the textbook is show giving you and the way most people teach it to you does not make it any less valid. I'm a huge proponent of if you find an easier method for you. For me, this is my easier method. It's not always easier for other people, but it takes you a little while to get acclimated to it. Like I said, it just helped me to remember the formulas overall. Because let's be realistic, how many formulas am I asking you guys to remember by the end of this summer? About 50 or 60. In addition to the 100 and some odd that you already learned from trigonometry, in addition to the other 50 or 60 that you should already know from your algebra class. Okay? Anything that helps you remember it. But you know what? I'm not done with this. Why am I not done with this? Because there's a dy over dx in there, which means that i got to substitute in what dy over dx is. <clears throat> Since dy over dx is this, that's going in right there. which means the second derivative with of y with respect to x is equal to the following, negative 2y minus 2x times 4 minus 2xy all over x squared. And that whole thing is times x squared minus 4 minus 2xy times 2x all over x to the fourth. And notice I have not even begun to really simplify the numerator yet. The reason I was going to wait is because this x squared here will divide out with this x squared when I take this x squared and distribute it over both terms, right? Because this x squared is going to multiply this term and that term. So I end up with 2, negative 2, x squared y. And now, here comes the fun part. That's going to divide out, right? That's going to go away. And then I still have to take this negative 2x here and multiply it by the 4 and multiply it by the negative 2xy. I'm not going to do that all at once. I'm going to write it as negative 2x times 4 minus 2xy minus this one I am going to go ahead and multiply out. That's negative 4 times 2x is a minus 8x. That's a negative negative times a positive is a positive 4x squared y all over x to the fourth. 
I need to keep going because I'm not even close to being done with simplifying this thing. So I got negative 2x squared y, negative 2x times the 4 and times the negative 2xy. That's going to give me a negative 8x plus 4x squared y minus 8x plus 4x squared y all over x to the fourth. So I got a negative 2x squared y. Let me just double check and make sure I haven't made any mistakes that I can see. Okay. So 8, so that's going to be a 6x squared y minus 16x all over x to the fourth. But I'm not done yet, am I? That's going to be equal to 2 times 3xy minus 8 all over x cubed. Yeah, but I divided it out, didn't I? Because if I factor 2x out of this thing, which is what I did, the x that's going to be here will divide with one of the x's here, giving me the x cubed. Right? That's your answer. That's your second derivative. Yes, you do need to simplify them as much as you possibly can. I probably would accept this on a test. I'm not sure if WebAssign would. All right, any questions? Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Can you go over how you first set up the equation? Like, you know, you set up the equation. All the way back at the beginning? Like, right here? Okay. dy over dx is equal to 4 minus 2xy all over x squared, right? <clears throat> to tell you the truth, I only use the quotient rule because that's what you guys probably would have defaulted to. I personally would have done this. If I were doing the problem, I would have rewritten it as dy over dx is equal to 4 x to the negative 2 minus 2x to the negative 1y. 4 over x squared, right? Minus 2xy over x squared. The x and the x squared will cancel one out so that I'd actually have 2y over x. I'm going to rewrite them like that because I don't have to use a quotient rule now. But if I don't do that, if I go ahead and continue with the process that we used, okay, to find the second derivative, what I'm looking at is d over dx of 4 minus 2xy times x squared. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let's do this. I'm going to put this in red. I'm going to put this in fuchsia. And if there's anybody that's colorblind, I do sincerely apologize for using multiple colors. 
it does help me concentrate. Okay, that's the derivative of the numerator right here times the denominator, right? You follow me on that part. Then I'm going to subtract the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. And that's all going to be over the denominator quantity squared. Okay, so you got me on this, right? And since so I'm actually, yeah, okay. Now, the derivative of this thing. I'm going to use the sum rule, or difference rule. I'm going to take the derivative of this minus the derivative of that. That's really what that means. So let's break that down, okay? That means that I've got d over dx of 4 minus d over dx of 2xy. And really, I can pull the 2 out if I want and just look at the derivative of xy, but I'm not going to do that right now. In fact, maybe I will. No, 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 I'm not. I'm going to leave it alone. And, in fact, let's do it this way because I think, ultimately, we're going to have a plus d over dx of negative 2xy, right? Does that make sense? And this whole thing is multiplying x squared. So that's just, when I look at this, this right here breaks out like that, right? Now, the derivative of this is 0. So I don't have to worry about it, right? And I'm going to use this notation, which we used previously when we were doing limits. It's just going to go to zero, so I'm not going to worry about it anymore. Now, the thing is, is this part right here, this is going to break down into the derivative of negative 2x times y plus negative 2x times the derivative with respect to x of y. <clears throat> if you want to do it the way the textbook does it, write this term first and write this term second. It's the only difference. Now, what's the derivative of negative 2x? Negative 2y plus a minus 2x, which is minus 2x. What's the derivative of y with respect to x? Say that again. dy over dx. Because I'm assuming, Haley, right? No. Mallory, I'm sorry. Mallory, I'm assuming this is where you were getting hung up, right? Does that make sense now? And this one's not so hard, right? Okay. So does that help? Good. And it is confusing. I will grant you that. Implicit differentiation is not fun. It really is not. Especially when you're in the second, third, and fourth derivatives. Not fun at all. Okay. So are we good on that? Okay. And that brings us down to where we were. All right. That's the end of